Oh, there it is. There it is. Here we go. How's life, man? Great, man. Hey, how do you say hello in Polish? Dzień dobry. Ooh, so one more time. Jenny, D Z I E N. Jenny. Jenny. The N has a slash on top of it. It's Enya, yeah. like Nya. Yeah. Jenny. 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 Not 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 either. Jenny. Dobre. Dobre. Dobre means D O B R Y. Good. Jenny. Dobre. Jenny. Work it. Um, What's up, man? Oh man, oh man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, great stuff, man. So I'm focusing on this and, and getting getting ready for prime time. Went through some numbers, man. The the, the models, <laughs> man. Don't wanna. <clears throat> ah, the model looks really good for the version where we're training, where where we're setting people up, 24 crews, and one of eight gets into management, meaning they're gonna start to learn to run crews. Okay. Uh, I looked at the numbers for that, and man, it's just kind of explodes. The revenue explodes, and growth can potentially explode if we. The idea is if, <clears throat> like you know, the startup is slow, but if we can train people, so you take the say we do the first build. Let me, man, let me show you those numbers. Go to my log, man. Um, I want to show you the rationale for how, what I've been thinking today, and which is pretty crazy. Um, but I could see rapid scale out, like you know, like it's gonna take time to start up, right? But I think, I think I kind of. Had an insight, and we could try shooting holes through this. But this is what the thing looks like. Um, SH2 Enterprise Modeling. Uh, let me send you the link here. It's uh, it's on there. I see it. Uh... Yeah, but where are you going to go? To business plan, actually. So um, let me get you the minutes. So business plan would be December 2021. Take a look at this link. in a chat directly to there okay okay so let me just go through this super quick um but so i was thinking at thinking actually go into the first doc or maybe you want to um can i share my screen so sure. I can... let me give you permission mm-hmm Okay. Uh, so if we go into this doc here, I was thinking, man, what's it? How can we do this? Like, because we can only have like a few builds, okay? Like quarterly cycle. Like we do the first one April, let's say, right? Glide path. Mm -hmm. Where's Where's glide path? I'm gonna look at your glide path and see how this is consistent. <clears throat> We have April, like February through April, right? Right. Um, swarm build. The latest on that was that if we can, um, because we don't have trained people yet, we're gonna try to fly in people, pay them well. Right. Right. So that's, man. If we if that works, then um, okay. Say it's um, build one is is around April. Let's see. Uh, First house, first house here is April 1, right? Show house finished on February 1st, first house April 1. And then like three month or two month cycles, like June 1 and then August 1. So kind of like mm -hmm. look at the first three builds. But if we get a 24 swarm and then we get three three managers trained, one and eight, then each of them could start running the events. Now, um, so basically like you can see this exploding the this ex, this exponential curve is if we actually train people like one out of eight so we recruit four managers so basically we recruit people who have had build who have run crews or or run some kind of a productive production operation and we said that maybe not necessarily builders unless they're progressive builders because builders mm -hmm. bitch otherwise just get <laughs> get um craftspeople of, of some sort 
to do this. Uh, so say we could recruit, uh, focus on that kind of recruiting for open-minded people who are tradespeople, but um, skilled craftspeople in other areas. So the orange line shows what happens when we actually train people. The red line, and this is actually um, under the assumption that we do one bill. Let's look at the, <clears throat> let's look at the actual numbers behind that. So below that is the spreadsheet here. So I'm looking at quarter cycle, build one, two, three, four, five. I went all the way up to five, but build up to build three is realistic perhaps for, for this year. So build three, like say, end of this coming year. Build yeah. one early, build two middle, late. So first build and revenue, I'm saying house build gets 50K net revenue. Um, that's the kind of goal that we have that's reasonable, 50K net. So we start with the first in Kansas City, one build. We got 24 people, three managers trained, right? So the, the con that becomes interesting is the new builds possible if we're training people. Added revenue is what the, what the managers actually start bringing in. Okay, so build two, let's do two builds in parallel because we know we're gonna have idle people because the build in principle is really fast and we'll find out more on December 16th, right? Okay. So we'll see how realistic those schedules are, but say we can build two houses at a time, 100K revenue. So I would do that. I, I, I'm, we got the crews. Uh, we're doing two house builds at the same time. We're, we're perfecting our technique still. So then we have three, six managers trained from that because we had two swarms of 24 people, but they may, may or may not be the same guys, maybe different guys, uh, maybe the same guys. But no, the, if it's six managers, that means um, uh, let's just say those are two different crews. So now we have three managers trained, but what are these guys? These, those are the three guys that were trained in a first build. Sure. And so forth. So, so then the next cycle, we do four builds in parallel. So I'm out there going to Kansas City. Now maxing out at four builds and then from four builds from then on. Like I think four is a good number, 200K revenue. But now look at the numbers of people trained. Uh, so four cohorts of 24, four storms of 24, 12 managers so look at what this 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 12 equals it's the it's the two times because we're saying that each manager will end up doing one house build then they get good and they can do two at a time and then they can do four at a time so this 12 here adds up as two times d12 which is the guys yeah. trained two cycles ago yeah plus the new guys that came from the last cycle who built um, already. So you can see those numbers and, and same here, like now you're getting four times the guys who did three cycles ago, two times the guys from the third cycle ago, and one time from the cycle just before that. So you get, you get to like huge numbers of capacity and added revenue and it just starts exploding. Like that's uh, at this level, like, so that's 480K right here. Uh, added revenue on top of the 200K here. So here you see the red kind of peaks out as a solo, solopreneur march and proving the model. And then all the other guys are bringing in all this other revenue. So I was just saying this, this could be realistic in terms of possibly like, I mean, uh, this is a big story here. This is like showing exponential growth and like um, uh, pretty crazy times because I think this is actually could be doable. So what are, what are your thoughts? Any, any comments on this thing? Oh, wait, I wasn't sharing there at the end. What was that? Uh, okay, sorry. Can you hear me now? Margin. Before. Uh, you, I lost you at yeah, exponential. I can, I can hear you. Yes. Oh, uh, you can hear me now. Yeah. Well, I was just saying that uh, here. So the red is if I were doing the builds leading crews at a cap of four builds concurrently every quarter. Right. That's still good. That's that's per. Per, I mean, that's 200K times four, that's 800K. 
but it starts exploding when you get the managers who are trained and who start running uh, first one build, then two builds after they get good and four builds when they perfect their art. And, and these are super efficient, productive people. So the exponential happens when we've got people trained in a train, a trainer model for swarm builds. Now, um, not going to be easy because to, to do a swarm build, swarm build management, um, ah, it takes a learning curve for experienced people. It could be easy. I, I can't tell how, how difficult that would be or if I could do it, but I'm assuming that I can run up to four, <laughs> four crews, uh, four swarms of 24. The prior experience is running basically a team of 50, you know, myself and a few, you know, team of, uh, you know, we had a couple of leaders, of course. Right. Um, like three leaders and myself, but I think to say we're running crews of 24 is quite realistic. And uh, to to scale, if, if the if the builds work just like we've seen in real life here for this house, or or actually CD Go Home three, I mean if that's realistic, and we know it, it's doable. We we've done it. Uh, we didn't do it up to full interior finishing. Uh, that's that's the next part getting all those other parts efficient but i mean just like the exterior parts the interior and all that i mean it follows the same principles so i don't see there's a far cry to to see why why the whole overall process is not that efficient so anyway uh that's that's kind of the thoughts because now where do the trained people come in like it's going to be some balance between people that we get initially we have to do it with people who are the the skilled trades people from other areas because we don't have people uh, and we'll see how how quickly we can get people trained that we maybe this is only possible like what i'm showing in those graphs is possible only with highly trained people it may not be possible with people that we just uh high the the people who are just crafts people who we take off off the street crafts people you know yeah we'll sure. see well presumably there's you know there's people in the kansas city area who possess these skills um there's people everywhere who possess the basic skills that requ are required. And then it's a question of whether or not you can entice them, whether or not you can convince them this is a real enough opportunity to come out and, and try this out. And so I think we're in the realm of marketing now. Um, in addition to like nailing down the timeline and the feasibility of this in the eyes of K Kansas mm -hmm. city and the municipality, like, this, this is a real marketing problem because it's such a new opportunity. It kind of sells itself when you lay out the map like that. Uh, but it's still, we need to recognize this is a departure from if we are going to be targeting people with existing skills who maybe earn a living building houses now. Um, so I think that's, that's where my mind goes initially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a marketing question. It's, it's about spreading new ways, a different way of doing this, which, which may be super hard, you know, maybe. Yeah. I mean, super hard in terms of, um, I guess like convincing people that it's a real opportunity initially, it will get easier over time. But, um, I did want to ask about the, uh, development assistant assistant team. Did you get any confirmation yet that we're scheduled? No. Okay. No. Yeah. So I, I'm no not confirmation. sure. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I'm wondering if it would be just see. just online or not. I mean, it, sh it should be a it should be a virtual meeting, but I actually don't know. Um, I'm just I'm getting, right. going into the account now to see if there's going to be any sort of confirmation. Um, I mean, I may have to call them to figure out how the communication works. Mm -hmm. And what's what's your br summary over over the what I, what I just said? That's like um, you're saying like the the summary of that is okay. So don't worry about that. Is the summary more like okay, prove the the f first build, and then it will be downhill from there? Or what? What are your? I mean that did I not think that's elicit a... satisfactory feedback yet. <laughs> no, I <laughs> like everything else that you you think is possible. Uh, it doesn't change the initial steps we have to take. So right now we're working on narrow. Uh, building a refined plan so that we can actually accomplish the mission, mm -hmm. which is to build a house. 
uh, buy a lot of land, find a customer, build a house. Um, and regardless of how uh, successful we are attracting the right people and building a cohort of instructors, we still need to cross that first threshold the, and future houses depend on that. So, so to me, the limiting factor is here, the success in the actual two week build that we're talking about and coordinating with all the appropriate agencies to make sure it's compliant. Um, to me, that is all like getting a sense of that and having the plan is a prerequisite to committing to pay people to, to either fly out or to recruit them locally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except, I mean, already, I think it changes something for me in terms of the kind of message we're putting out there is more, uh, not just like, can we scrounge by, but really high quality people who see a real growth opportunity here for, uh, for very, uh, just a very attractive opportunity based on a, uh, if we can find the proper leadership. Cause I think uh, this ups the, the bar in terms of like, who are going to be getting to the show? No, let's. My my new clarity is, well, let's get some really. Let's talk to the tops, tops of the tops, people who are probably perhaps, well, who are probably successful in something else already. And we're going to basically say, no, no, no this is actually something that you should consider because you're going to stick around. We're we're going to make you an offer you cannot refuse, kind of thing. Um, exactly. That's exactly. kind of how, how I'm thinking about it right now. Well, yeah, exactly. I, I don't think, I don't disagree with that at all. I think that is hundred percent right. Um, yeah. And the, so focusing on a yeah. management, management growth, growth of our management capacity. Cause the, the thing I'm trying to get away from is, okay, let's get, let's start up a business unit that does not need me to, to do everything. Like, so that is training and transferring that. So the higher level manager, a manager, we can get to this, the more diverse skilled person, which also means highly paid, uh, that the quicker uh, I shall <clears throat> transcend the Missouri compromise of slavery <laughs> and <laughs> become free. Yeah. yeah. So, it, but it still all comes down to uh, like our ability to attract those people in part depends on the feasibility of the project. Of course. And so that, that, that just seems like the short term focus right now. Um, I, I don't know yeah. where you, like, uh, other than illustrating what's yeah. possible, um, is there, you know, anything else on that you wanted to hit before moving on? Oh, yeah. That's why I got a new job for you. Yeah. Wait <laughs> so on. How about managing? So how about, um, so the, the cabins, uh, given that Katarina needs some help on that, she couldn't join today. She's, she's uh, trying to relax here. Um, yeah. So we don't know how much she's going to be able to contribute throughout. I mean, hopefully uh, more than less. But I think um, I was going to say, can we get you actually, if if uh, maybe like take that on more seriously? Because we were kind of saying before, it's okay, if Katarina can do it, then yes. How about we make that happen no matter what? Now we do have a conceptual design already. And this would be an exercise of the, the simplest kind of model we could build using the construction set that, that we've got. And maybe you want to dive more deeper into that, into the weeds on that. Cause that would be, cause what does that address in terms of documentation? Documentation is the same cause we're using similar modules, identical or similar. Uh, we might go down to thinner lumber, like two by fours as opposed to two by sixes, but a lot of the technique is similar and it would get you like if the, well, Actually, for the cabins, if it's a done in the framework of a builder crash course and infrastructure creation, if mm -hmm. it's builder crash course, it would have to people to build the real thing. Know what I mean? And last we talked, we we were we were gonna have kitchen and bathroom in those, right? In in each one. I think a bathroom. At least. Bathroom, yes, bathroom at least. Um, so, so with that said, like given that, okay, to get leading up to uh, any of this, what I said regarding the revenue models, I, that contributes to documentation and um, infrastructure that gets us to 
uh, apprenticeships and so forth but it's it's mission critical it's it's the uh, documenting all the building stuff like right now until february the first i want to do a tour uh, so uh, i'm already starting to invite people for february 1st okay but the documentation for builders it's going to be continuing that work i mean right now i'm doing a lot of work on the finishing stuff like you know we're grading and doing final stuff like still still haven't done some of the exterior details like the siding and uh, like the decorative band and uh, finishing all that so i'm gonna see myself a lot doing that and i'm doing like four hours a day on that working on a house outside of organizational work outside, just so physical work it's like i'm out there like four hours um and then documenting and, and scheming outside of that so like for example is working some on materials organization today and stuff like that um but i don't know how we can enlist you in that like maybe think of this as as do the you know get up like make make the the cabin course happen no matter what okay because i, I think it's pretty that's, <clears throat> can, can you specify not a bit otherwise just yeah can you can you just right now what i'm tracking as priorities are from last week are the emergent ventures application uh construction timeline and planning for the first house build and those were the two things that we left last week as the the current focus and then now are you saying that you regardless of what happens with the house build you want to be able to run cabin builds um on site to initiate infrastructure development is that what you're saying and so far that's gonna that's gonna require if so say if you're an instructor doing that we're building capacity to teach and doc, to document and teach people how to do this so it's it's synergistic to that so i would say um yeah like when, I, when i'm thinking about product that's that i i see emergent ventures yes cool um it's not like for the emergent ventures if we think about it because we have some money enough money to prototype the next build at least one one build well do the real build um it's not like in terms of rollout sequencing it's not critical it's nice it might be really good okay um, yeah but i actually think that um i mean i think maybe we can just knock that well i'm not sure how much time it's going to take us to do that but but i actually see a bigger priority is things like um, developing that leadership capacity to, to lead crews means like if, if you can help on, on, okay, here's procedures, like literally thinking of taking, take, since you're more, you know, you have more of an outside perspective, helping on the, on the part of the document, like the, the cheat sheets, man, cheat sheets, looking back to actual design. Um, so you, know I mean? so you envision me looking like the, at the, the conceptual tech. design for the tiny house and turning that into cheat sheet instructions? Yeah. Is that, is that what you're saying? You could do that. Yeah. You think you can do something like that? Uh, I'd be happy to dive into it. I don't have any experience with FreeCAD, but I taught myself SketchUp and I have some background in SolidWorks from a long time ago. And the model right now is in, in Sweet Home 3D. So for example, um, um let me show you what the cabin looks like right now so let me share my screen again so uh you got to find that oh, see cabins That's kind of how it looks. But here, if you go to this Google Drive here, the CAD is in Sweet Home. It's a concept. Now, Sweet Home is something you download readily. So you download this thing, cabin. And then you boot up Sweet Home. So I've got Sweet Home open, for example, here. So I'll open that cabin. That's the cabin. That's how it looks. Um, now, Sweet Home, you can work off of this. Now, actually, all the modules are like, for example, I was shown um, like in this one. Th these are the actual technical wall modules, like for the Seed Home 3, actually. Uh -huh. Right. 
So this kind of stuff is what you do. And, and it's like you hide and unhide stuff here within, um, within a part tree. So uh, this is like pretty much user friendly. So you can learn this in a second. You can basically open up all these files. That all you need to do is manipulate these things like um, make them, um, ungroup them and make them, you can, you can hide and, and show all the different parts readily. Um, but yeah, the cabin cabins are like this. So from your perspective, I mean, how does the, you know, say, say it's the, the cabins that we build out. Um, I mean, would you want to, you are, I, I think we said you, you would be planning to come here to, to the, to the crash course, right? So you're, you're essential in that co-instructor yeah. and we can do. <clears throat> so, uh, since our last meeting, I've gotten up some bad news. Yeah. My wife is deploying in February to Kuwait. Oh, uh, which oh, means wow. that I'll be single dad for that nine month period from February to, I guess, October. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, that doesn't mean that coming out to Missouri is impossible. It just changes my availability a little bit. It's going to require some uh, advanced planning to make that work. Um, so I just wanted to give you a heads up that uh, we're, we don't know the full implications of that, but it's definitely going to impact my availability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> So does it look like, I mean, so we, we have a date in terms of planning. I mean, we do have a date, tentative date for the, the crash course. I mean, is, would that, with this amount of notice, do you think it would be hard or you can make it because we, we know, you know, we have a date on a potential calendar. So, so date on the potential calendar, just to be clear, the, the crash course you're talking about um, the tiny house or the, the cabin. Yeah. Or are you talking about the seat home? No, the the cabin. The cabin. Okay. What? Which? Which? Uh, which tentative date are you talking about for that? Well, it looks like what was it? April one. On the glide path. <clears throat> uh, product develop. So right now we've got product development for tiny house, overlapping in April and May. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, um, and the crash course starting in June. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. oh okay, okay. I, I was looking, where did I get April 1 for, for actual crash course? No, so we're talking about June, June 1. But, but keep in mind, like, the, the, this glide path was designed because we're, we're sort of, we're trying to work around just manpower requirements of, of your and Katarina's mm -hmm. brains. So, you know, to, to make the, the home builds occur simultaneously with the crash course needs either money um, or it's going to need money and some additional coordination and resources to make that happen simultaneously. And so I think on the glide path, what we did is assume um that we're going to have to generate our own revenue, which means the home builds are going to have to occur before the crash course or before any infrastructure development on the actual campus. But that's an assumption that can change um, if you need to. Um, what's the ramification of that? So, so given, um, so, so the build, um, this, this will reframe more as tradespeople. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, you're saying, oh, what's the ramifications of which? what you said. Uh, so the revenue generation from the build uh, funds, we were gonna either pull a trigger on, okay, maybe get 
additional funding or we'll see if the the revenue project revenue from the actual build allows us to to actually fund fund the infrastructure so, but it's more like yeah we, we, my impression was okay so this we decided we all agreed that the spec home build first was critical that was the most important mm -hmm. thing. yeah and we also agree that you're not ready to run another workshop or start an apprenticeship without some infrastructure investment or improvement. So mm -hmm. some level of that, right? And, and so I think my understanding was focusing on the seed eco home build meant that you, you do two things. You generate revenue and you develop interest in the seed eco home, which can then drive potential investment or like build a better case to go to Steve or somebody else to say like, hey, we've done this, we're successful. Now we need to invest in our infrastructure. Yeah. But again, these are all, these are all floating assumptions and, and week to week they're changing and we need to leave the door open for that. And so like right now our limitations are your time, my time and Katarina's time. Because, because you're simultaneously trying to build the physical house and refine the designs for the spec build I'm trying to operationalize the construction, the actual construction timeline and liaise with the Kansas City Development Office. And so anything else that we do on top of that is going to take time, take our attention away from those, that initial mission, which is the spec build. So, so just be, simply being aware of the trade-off here. Now, the quick way around that is to, to like hire somebody who's not like me and able to work you know, for free right now to take on additional tasks to produce some result. And so like, if you wanted to have the crash course be a simultaneous line of effort, we're going to have to invest something into making the campus ready for 12 or 24 people, however many we decide. We played around with different versions of that um, for that first class. And you need somebody to manage that um, on top, separately from your developing the CD go home as the actual product in my developing the operational plan. And, and the glide path as it stands is designed, assuming we don't hire anybody else, we're focusing our attention on the, on the first CD go home to make it go as smoothly as possible. And so we're investing our existing resources into that as the first mission and adjusting the crash course and apprenticeship schedule based on the success or failure of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need, um, <clears throat> we need, um, I think the, the most important thing is documentation regarding uh, everything around uh, the CD home. So, so I'm seeing February 1 come about. Documentation is not complete. We've got the full build and maybe maybe like between February 1 and March 1st, um, if the focus, because there's going to be building uh, product development for CD home, actually building and finishing everything, counting up. Uh, I mean, actually we can, you know, final, final, final budget what what exactly happened at the very very end by the time we're done and that's um yeah so february 1 to to Mar march 1 uh documentation then there's site selection and planning um house micro factory at factory farm production facility there so so that was yeah, that's a, i mean it's relevant but keep it that falls into the category of a lower priority to us than getting the CD go home out on the market. And, and lower priority in terms of how you allocate your time and attention. Because for you to do the documentation and finalize the product for the CD go home and design the house micro factory at factory farm, that to me seems like they're competing for your available resources. Which is why I keep going back to like you can hire somebody additionally to help you do this, um, but that's going to require resources that we don't have yet. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I think like to summarize how I viewed my involvement since I came out to visit, it's like just getting you to engage with the constraints so that we can prioritize tasks and in a, in a effective way, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, yeah. the, well, cre- creating a crash course is going to depend on our ability to feed people, to house them comfortably, to deliver on the marketing campaign for why they're coming out there to begin with, have the product and the instructions ready in the documentation um, and slash curriculum for while they're out there. Mm-hmm. Like developing all of those things is going to be very resource intensive on, on us right now. And so I think the trick, the, yeah, that, that's all I'm trying to say is, is I'm happy to do that if that is like one of the things that you think is necessary to like, you know, move the glide path forward. Um, from from my, my understanding though, it's your time is better used making the CD go home the best possible product it can be for the spec build. Yeah, of course. That's right. I mean, I thought I thought the crash course is synergistic in the sense that what is the overlap of uh, documentation for so so thinking specifically about um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it boils down to procedures, build cheat sheets sure. that are sure. really high quality. Yeah. Um, that 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 is rolled up and, to me in terms of like the curriculum slash program schedule for the crash course, and that's that's one small part of it. But there's still the like actual uh, moving equipment around and cleaning up the site and putting fresh coats of paint on stuff, and like those things are labor intensive and are, are will require some investment in time and people or time and labor and money. And so now the question is like, what, what's the ideal timing of that? Well, our initial thinking was if you do a spec built, built specifically, you get the OSE name out there, you build the credibility for the brand that will help recruit people to that crash course implementation. And in the background of all of our discussions so far has been this like silver, silver bullet option to just get money and do it, do the on-site uh, campus infrastructure development thing. But as mm-hmm. we've been going through since I visited you, it seems like that's less and less the ideal first move. Like maybe that's a move we make after we successfully build a house in Kansas City. And I'm seeing a lot of obstacles to building the house in Kansas City based on the swarm build model that we've come up with because we haven't even talked to the development assistance team yet. So like nobody from the Kansas City government has heard the pitch. So we can't answer the questions you send that email of like, what's the N number of inspections can we schedule them in advance? What happens if we fail one of them? What's the turnaround time? How are we gonna handle the travel and lodging for workers that come out if we mm-hmm. bust that timeline? Like, those are all super high risk contingencies that we don't have answers to yet. So right. um, my thinking was like, you're using this time, the four hours on site, and then the rest of the time developing the product as we, engage with the Kansas City Department to answer those questions. So that by, you know, February 1st, we have an, we have the rough timeline that we can then get down into the weeds at. So like, we're still at a higher level in terms of planning for the CD go home build and everything else that you're trying to accomplish sort of hinges on that. Yeah. But we could we could eat just as equally, like depending on the level of support that it currently exists for what you're doing in your name recognition of OSE, we just as easily could you know change the assumptions that instead of the CD go home build, the crash course is the thing we should be focusing on because it's like also going to build credibility and also going to generate revenue and also start infrastructure. No, no, that's not that's not that. I mean, we know that. 
the bottom line is, is houses real needs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the crash courses uh, supports supports that because it will generate people that know how to build and that can work with us or build their own houses. And but as you like laid that. out, as you laid out the swarm build for the CD go home, there's a way to pull in a lot of those uh, uh, outcomes of the crash course and in and in, by recruiting the right people to turn them into instructors and managers. I mean, you never know. You may build the first house successfully if it's if the if we plan effectively and and the house is a successful project. There may be sufficient demand where you can guarantee people the type of pay and and growth that you know you would need to scale this thing up on just the housing side potentially. And so the bottom line is like this is just a big experiment. It's we're producing the minimum viable product to gain more information about the market to then drive future business decisions. Yeah, I mean that's that's exactly what we're doing and and there's no skipping around that. You seem kind of bummed. I mean like are you do you feel like I'm holding you back here? Uh I feel that um, <clears throat> I want to see if you can uh, pull in, I could get you in, involved in some of the, I think the leadership or no, like so, things that are, there's the management part of managing people effectively that needs um I was hoping that you would be. I guess. I guess I was unclear whether you you would be participating in when we actually do the five day. Uh, or how, well, how we don't know what it's going to look like right now uh, right. until the sixteenth. But were you were you considering actually when we do the build here? Is was that on the table or not really? Or that's yeah. No, no, no. That's still on the table. It's still on the table. It, the the variables that determine like that feasibility are you know what the actual construction timeline is going to be what the budget is because like <clears throat> in order for me to come out there realistically i would have to bring my daughter which means you know figuring out a child care situation in kansas city which may involve me bringing somebody else from my family out to help me out you, you, so you can see how this kind of spirals out but like in principle whether or not i'm there is not a limiting factor yet and creating a a a management role for somebody to be on site that has you sort of sees the same picture that you and i see is a solvable problem even if it's not me but i'm still very much interested in filling that role if i can but at the end of the day, what I'm saying is like, that's not a limiting factor right now. The limiting factor right now is we don't even know what's possible with the inspection and permitting schedule yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever those schedules are, we gotta, we're going to have to roll out somehow. Nonetheless, I, I think um, I'm trying to call out for is, I don't know if you can be involved. Like if you've got, you know, we've got limited energy on getting this product out. Right the thing that's most necessary over anything else is actually working on um, documentation of it, right? Because yeah. one side is, I mean, there's documentation, the management, I mean, you, you, build, you build some carpentry stuff, right? So you do yeah. some woodworking, right? Right. So I think if we talk about the management perspective, you have some insight on actual uh, organizing the workflows. Sure. Like yeah. that level of documentation and management that goes into this, which, which we have to have laid out very carefully. Like, like perhaps looking at the, um, I guess I'd be asking about shifting you to looking more at the build construction, like, not as much the the project management, which I mean, we're we're gonna do that. I'm not really concerned about that. Like, can we make it through the codes? Of course we can. It's it's the questions are at what cost and you know how does that affect our model? And we always innovate and respond to that because it's you know there's some unknowns. Um, like for example, is the 
can you inst very technical things like can you install the the electrical connection before the the finish of the house because that will inf influence because we're optimizing everything to to the limit it'll determine how we trench like our trenching strategy you know stuff like that just uh technically in execution how how do we make sure all those details line up that they're that they're the most efficient that's that's where i think your skill set could come in the most actually looking at the build and yeah. refining that like really from an ergonomics but really it's process management perspective that that kind of a thing process but getting down into the details of that you know that build procedure like you know the many arrows which can be in parallel which can't uh evaluating those those steps and really strategizing um on that i mean specifically for the first build which which is going to be completely different than if we're doing like four houses at a time and like how how it influences this this model but anyway uh, that has to be detailed for the specific case of people flying in um we don't know a lot of the details but like we we can actually start planning like okay what do we know what don't we know um we know that we have to build a house we know that we can build it and we can probably build it we i, I guess we're pretty sure that uh, i don't think there's any controversy that we can build more efficiently because we're designing the whole process not into the product which nobody does architects do not design process into their their architecture so so as i design the or finish or implement the the details um maybe you can um collaborate on the the process management side 100 agree um, yeah ab workflow. absolutely but yeah. what I'm saying is that there's a step we have to get to before we build the instruction book, because like you said, a lot of the, a lot of the um, steps are going to require a knowledge of the inspections and, and what needs to be visible and stuff like that. And so like the, the answer to your question is like, yes, I, I can be involved in developing the process management for building the actual house and the instruction book but that is an output of understand having a common operational picture of what our compliance measures are. Yeah, but that's, uh, I think that's known more than you think. What we're asking regarding is like, like the very details, man, like in a scheme of most of the workflow management, that's like, it doesn't affect it a lot. It affects the schedule, but that means that we follow the same schedule at this point versus, oh, now it's delayed like that. And we might, you know, might think of some parallel tasks. So I, I don't think like it's as big as you think. We, we say a lot to it, a lot about it. And we, we make it like, oh, that's a, that's a critical potential block, but only from the perspective of the five day build. Fair enough. You know, yeah, no, that's fair. Only from the perspective of extreme efficiency. Right. But beyond that, there's like the 80% or 90% that's already valid uh, no matter what. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I got you. So it sounds like what I need to do then is get schooled up on the CD go home plans. Yeah. Yeah. And, and start... Yeah, I mean, um, so yeah, I'm still unclear what the what the answer is. So, so if we're doing a, if we're doing a build here, so say it's when I mean whenever it is, it's like likely being like April, around April. Um, so with. Or it doesn't matter if that's you doing that or we're passing it on to somebody else. I mean, uh, well, well, but I think that the thing that does, I don't think that matters because someone would have to do it. So we have to generate it. But I guess I'm trying to feel out the, um, like, whether you're clear about the purpose of that or is that your role to take or should we try to uh, try to fill this role some other way? I mean, I, I'm... That's not where my head goes. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to fill whatever role you need. So I, I don't, I don't really imagine my role as being constrained. 
by anything. You know, I'm, I'm volunteering here and I, I just want to see this thing turn into reality. So if you need somebody to pick up trash, I'll pick up trash. I think the bigger question is um, what is, what are the steps? What are the things that need to be in place to turn this into reality? And so um, you're in a better, better position to make that determination than I am. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, yeah, maybe that's not well defined for you, but for me, it, it is quite clear. It's, it's absolutely, it's the idea of understanding just to complete, like when I say playing this, like an Olympic athlete, that means in my mind, I can picture the whole thing. So I'm a really good conductor, right? So a conductor, yeah. I think is a good, good metaphor. Cause you know, there's so many pieces of instrument, um, coming in and at very specific times, and yeah, you kind of, with the additional thing that you got a quality control, so it's more than a, a conductor because then you have to still like take the product, look at it and quality control it and possible, possibly make change. So this is actually much harder than being a conductor. I don't know how hard it is to be a conductor because <laughs> I've never tried it. But, um, but there are th things like critical items are the quality control. It's, that's not a magical thing. It's a very quantitative uh, process oriented thing you can nail that to to absolute like like steve was asking well is this going to be good well well yeah the, that you got to design the quality control process just like you're designing the house itself that's like a whole that'll be like a whole book right there there's the instructionals but then i think an equivalent or possibly larger book is the equivalent quality control procedure for that instruction that's that's one one level. And before we get into the actual instructionals, um, the concept of work breakdown structure is very critical. It's it's like break break down something that right now we're talking about the idea that that twenty four people seamlessly without anybody stepping on their shoes on someone else's toes uh, actually works seamlessly like that, and that's unheard of. But it requires a level of discipline, level of detail that's also unheard of. So that's what I'm saying. That's the part that's that takes the time. The, this extreme manufacturing thing, no free lunch there. It's a, it's a pretty rigorous process, and that's and that's the part that we we have a pretty hard time to um, uh, to find people for. Because like an architect doesn't really do this. Um, they design concepts largely. Um, I mean, there's some some people that do it, but we just haven't been been good at at finding uh, the people that that can do it. But I think just it's really into the, getting into the nitty nitty gritty of just like pretty arduous process, product process, quality control management, like all the different things that go in there. But they're very well defined. Like the quality control is very well defined. Uh, timing is very well defined. Uh, tooling is very well defined. And there might be like, but even look at tooling like that could be in a book in itself because you can do any task 10 different ways what level of jigging are you going to design into this like so okay there's build and there's jigged builds you can invest like 100k into jigs that makes this make this doable or you can invest in a factory or there's different ways to do it so for every single aspect of this process there's complete deep like to get this product to to be like uh, x x times lower cost than industry standards it has to have that much more work go into it um, and we've done a lot of it and but i think like as always we just scratched the surface right because then the end of it it's 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 a gradual substitution of of things that make it go better like like for example the 3d printer right so now we're actually printing the whole module and Quality control is built into it. It's the quality control is built into how well you build the printer, you know, stuff like that. So it can go go levels and levels, and and also deciding like on the way we do the documentation. Is it language agnostic instructionals? Is it cheat sheets? Like, it's like I don't know. Like I think uh, to do this at the level where I think we would really need um, eventually is like. I don't know, like, I would say like 20, like really good people for like a whole year, like really good people. 
not not just scrubs off the street people who just graduated uh no like people with experience but anyway it's i, I think the amount of effort is is arduous and i think we've done a lot of work on this already uh, we've got a lot of this but at the same time i feel like we're scratching the surface of what's possible here but i'm just saying that uh, that's that's the part that's um that's the difficult part the actual that's the design so design um, design of every single element of this and i'm not really concerned about like I mean, I maybe was before, like about all, oh, like how are you gonna make it through codes, and is this compliant? Well, well obviously, m many people build houses that are compliant, and we just have to do right. that, and that's all. But so I, I don't see that as a big, big deal. The big deal is the innovation and how we are designing and building, uh, while fitting that into the the current standards. And if they don't fit into the current standards, we have to pretty much quickly reevaluate. Okay, now this is the way we, upon every new piece of information we'll get a different process. Like we, we might have this procedure for doing electrical. We talk on the 16th, we find a different procedure. We see that we have a different procedure and in a different jurisdiction, it might be different, right? Because there might be some variation to, to all these things. So I'm, I'm just um, emphasizing the level of rigor that has to go into the actual design um, of product and process to, to deliver that product. Right. I'm on board. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, um, I think the, the, the initial step for me still has to be information gathering, which means looking at all the components and then trying in my mind, imagining the optimal way to permit to, for a team of people to put them together. And then from that, from those two steps, then sketching out what the plans should look like um, and what the process should look like. And so like, I'm on board to do that. Um, I'm going to need your help initially to help to, to focus what I'm looking at. And maybe it's yeah. just, maybe it doesn't matter where I start because there's just so much there. Start the foundation. So I would say we've already got copious documents on everything, right? So mm -hmm. why don't you start at, see if you can, I mean, I think you've done a good job in parsing and eliciting good information out of the wiki. And this is, this is like that. Here's, here's how we did it and how we planned it. And here's how we did it here. But now what's the assumption for the lot? And in fact, maybe we select the lot based on how we think the, design, the, the foundation should be done. So we, we get, we only reduce ourselves to flat lots, nothing that's got any slope or nothing that's got like, I don't know, something like trees on this one side or whatever, uh, because that's how our workflow goes. And like, we really want to, integrated at that level. So right now we did a, what we did here was we, uh, we had a sloped, I mean, where we built this one was sloped and that was the procedure we used there. So we have to decide certain things like, okay, is that going to be like where we're digging this off for the little pad or is it actually going to be <clears throat> trucked in and this and that, like those kinds of decisions that might actually influence, like it, it's all this recursive thing and every piece like adds, adds more info to the puzzle because we do want to, um, do an efficient build. And, and we find that definitely like, oh, just because you did do this, you just saved like 2X, you know, that kind of stuff. It does matter. Um, and, and because we're trying to optimize the product, we, we're, um, yeah, we're trying to do that, that level of analysis. But I think what you can do is, like, okay, so say, okay, assume a lot that's buildable in Kansas City. Uh, how do we do the foundation? Let's assume it's flat. Let's assume we have like we can't dig, we have to evaluate these things. Like, can we dig ditches? Do we have to, you know, is there material there to do the proper grade and slope for what this needs to be? Because possibly there might be many places where you actually got to move soil in from off site. I don't know. Um, but I think we, we can start at the foundation and say, okay, this is what we do right now. This is what we're doing. And we actually did the, already did that too. There's a very clear rationale for how we're doing it that minimizes earth moving and it's it's efficient and all that but we might want to reevaluate that see if that makes sense for what the actual first build so maybe take what we have already and and start start doing start uh i think from the the perspective that you do which is like asking questions and and like um you know kind of like verify the plan like you're saying like we got the glide path to kind of verify if we're on time you think you can do this for um, now with the build process, so, okay, this this makes sense or it doesn't. 
I mean, do, is there a better alternative? You know, I mean, unless you can hire a construction manager, they, and that that's really going to be the the limiting factor on this man is like my own expertise is going to tap out pretty quick, and I'm going to be slower to arrive at some of these answers than somebody who's an expert on it. But if it's the best alternative we have right now, then that's what I'll do. Well, but the, see, the, there's another thing to this, and that is we're trying to educate people to to learn this process, how you make these decisions, because because uh, I don't think we're going to scale to where we need to until we teach people how these decisions are made. So maybe part of this could be like, what is the thought process or the design process? Like maybe you can elicit like, here's the actual design considerations, like that kind of stuff. You think you can work at that, maybe that metal level for how you... So here we design a foundation and then we say, here's what you have to consider to design the foundation. Because the part of teaching people to replicate the same thought process is what's going to yield transformative housing. They have to understand um, understand the conditions enough so that um, they can perform that way. And I think, and I'm inclined to think that a person that can think rather a subject matter than a subject matter expert is potentially even better. You know, oh, the subject matter agree. expert will be influenced by, Price, by yeah. in industry prejudice. No, I, I get. It. I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you there. I, I, I agree with that assessment. I'm just saying it's going to take longer. <laughs> I'm just not going to be able to move as quickly. I'm not going to be able to arrive at the correct, and I may get some key stuff wrong. Um, that that's all. And like, like I don't want to lose focus here of the mission. Like the mission here is to successfully build and sell a house improve the model like that's that's the mission here and so like this first build may not have the level of refinement that we want it most certainly will not no but that's fine yeah i yeah, i don't want to get a... yeah i i don't want to get too bogged down into what's possible right now um because like it, we can accomplish the mission without a perfect version of this process yeah absolutely I think so. I think so. And it's, it always gets better. But I think what, what could be useful is um, like refactoring what we have already. Yeah. So. Would that be useful? Yes, it will be useful. I guess, I guess you're pointing out to the, to how much time it will take, but somebody's got to do it, whether me or somebody else, we got to, I mean, I'd, at the very least, at least it could be like you could be like an editor, because we think we know how to do this already, right? And, right. and yeah, yeah. your your oversight would be oh, okay. Yeah, this actually makes perfect sense. Or maybe like no, this this is retarded. Like this doesn't make sense. Maybe you can point things out like that. I, I would like a but, combination of me me going into the material myself and you and I you walking me through what you think should happen and me helping you refine it. I think there needs to be a combination of those two things. Me walking you through what I think should happen and you. So like, like the foundation. So you say like, here's all the, here's all the documentation about like how our foundation is designed. And me as the objective third party says, like, this is unclear to me. Um, like, can this be standardized? Um, asking those types of questions. And then the synthesis of that is a clear, mm -hmm. like decision tree, basically, for somebody who walks up on these plants and says, like, if the ground is sloped, here are your considerations, here's the soil characteristics you need to pour, pour the concrete. If you don't have those characteristics, this is the material and stuff that you would need to upgrade it. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, or it's here's almost a wall like... module. Here's a mo wall module. And here's how we were building them. Here's the parallel tasks, and here are the sequence tasks. And then I can say, okay, like, can a per two person team using these jigs construct this in this sequence or this manner, and then turn that into a picture with instructions? Yeah, and we've got plenty of different documents I, I think it's really like what i'm asking you is to do accounting really because um accounting and editing because we've got a lot of this material already and it's about cleaning it up and actually modifying sure. some of it too yeah so for example um 
Yeah. I mean, we actually have the, the, it's about, we went from V2 to V3 pretty quickly and yep. we changed something. So it's like, okay, reconciling things, sure. things like that. Yeah. I um, can help with that. I, I think I'd be good yeah. with that. It, it, I would just, if yeah. that's the route we want to take, then I, what I need from you is a filter. I need you to be able to, to send me the stuff that you're currently working on from that you need refined. You need um, input. You need adjustment to. Because <laughs> like that, that's the one downside of the wiki is like this, it's just a sea of documents and data. Yeah. Okay. So let's get you started. In the next five minutes, you'll learn everything about everything mm -hmm. about the, the Eco Home. Okay, so maybe, um, and how do we document this? So on the glide path, I'm going to set up a new page, uh, slide, duplicate slide. Um, I think we can oh, gather around, build cheat sheets. Um, so then we'll start pasting and I'll walk you through. So let me share my screen here. Again, um, so so what you need to know. So development templates like for Seed Home Two. That's a, that's a development template. It's all here now. All you need is Seed Home V three. There's some some improvements, namely what we changed is how we do the the module itself, where um we went away we went away from from the exterior plywood to osb then siding and we also uh but you'll see that in the design it should be clear if you study the documents so what what do you got to study like okay v2 is actually where i'm going to um when i actually so for example yesterday i was doing data collection i was actually talking about finish grading and insulation skirt. I'm actually keeping my track of my time. Um, but as far as the, uh, that's why I'm, cause we're finishing that up, but the CD go home three, it was the one that we, we just took apart and it's, it's in modules, but uh, while on the two, the CAD was completely. Um, so if we go to back to two, so, so this development spreadsheet is organized such that every asset is there and it's described by, you know, from CAD module breakdown concepts, industry standards, blah, blah, uh, all this BOMs, build instructions, build pictures and video. Uh, so everything is in there. So if you get lost, it's like, it's kind of in there, but there might be deeper links, um, under all of them. And, um, The most important thing is it boils down to CAD, which is item five, build, which is build instructions, and BOMs, and they should all reconcile. Um, so in the build instructions, I mean, we've got foundation, initial doc. So that's this is going to be okay. So what do we do for the foundation? Um, what do we ended up doing? Typically these documents work as like the latest stuff is at the top. So this might be what, what we ended up doing. And um, that's probably what we ended up doing. And this was, um, if you go back, you, you can probably study more like, oh, okay, these were the initial thoughts earlier and earlier. That's actually from, no, it's just a concept doc altogether. And that's Katarina draws these kinds of things. Um, so you got a lot of different info here, starting from the initial plan which we let's see did we do that i'm not even sure if we did that but um that's if you go down further into the the dock it'll be 
be like probably the stuff that's further back was not used or it was like exploring uh, step by step. So, you know, you learn about foundations here, blah, blah, blah. Um, we were debating a lot, like understanding. So in these, these kinds of diagrams here where um, the bottom line is you want to build up the soil, don't dig down, but build it up and everything is exposed. So you don't have to dig to, to insert your insulation. That's how we do the shallow frost protected footer. So we're building stuff up on the flat ground. So this, this mound we had to build up. Um, I guess I'll leave you to kind of study this doc, but um, foundation is a big deal. Foundation is like 20% of the house. So it's should actually spend like if you have this, this final, this final that we assume here, uh, you have to like when you study these documents, you might want to look at, okay, this is at the top. So I'm kind of telling you how, how this logic works at the top. So it's probably the recent stuff. And yes, that is pretty much what we did. Um, and what we did here was to do the entire shallow frost protected footer. We made, we made the, the mound in the middle, we laid forms and we dug a little trench so that we could get up to 18 inches of the required by code footer. And this was like the lowest uh, effort way you can do it. Now, when I did that, did not have a backhoe. And after, after the forms, you cannot really get a backhoe in there. So I just did, dug that by hand with an auger and, and by shovel. Um, now, this is what I think actually is perhaps the most effective way. But if the code says 18 inches, is that the, 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 the logic question there would be, OK, is this the, the valid thing to do? And so far, I think. Probably, yeah. And this was the original idea, but this was the final idea. So study everything through the viewpoint of two, which is the final. And you may not offhand like see, oh, what are we doing here that's different? Or what are we doing here that's different? Or there's like more like further back. This talks about form work. Like further back, there's, I'm going backwards, like here. That is different. So you have to do, um, you have to like study this and reconcile slide 17 versus slide two. So it's looking, yeah. Hey, I'm getting but, the impression, as, <clears throat> as you're going through this, I'm getting the impression like, I, I just don't know enough about, like you're the, you're the subject matter expert on this. Yeah. And so you know, looking at the data, what, is current what's not what is relevant for the next house and what is not like it, this seems like a very ineffective and inefficient way to go about it mm -hmm. i i feel like this is where your attention needs to be. be because essentially what you're what you're suggesting is pulling from all of the work that you've already done to start fresh to create mm -hmm, the instructions mm -hmm. and the in the in the procedure and i mean there's going to be so much of me having to catch up to get to yeah. the point where you are to be able to do this. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, like I'm up for Maybe. anything. I'm just, I'm, I'm going right, to hurt right. you more than I'm going to help you. Yeah, no, that's, that's good feedback. Um, yeah. So, so basically it's like in the, you know, at what level can somebody actually step in and, and do like really constructive work that doesn't hurt? Maybe um, well, well, well once, it has to be, what, once you've like, pulled the relevant information for the next build, once you've pulled, basically you're the person who says, or I think you're the person who says like, out of all of the shit that I've already done, this is what has to happen. This is what I need to have for it to look like yeah. going forward. I can be the person to then organize that into a procedure. Or organize, yeah, or make it understandable. Like, but at right. what level do I leave off versus you come in? That's that's the tricky part. So tell me more about that. Where do you see that that a process that would actually be useful? Well, let, let's just using the foundation example. <clears throat> if you were to yeah. go through all of your experience with the foundation and documents, and you're saying, "This is the shit yeah. that matters," 
on a, mm -hmm. on a fresh, fresh slide. This is everything that matters. I think this is the sequence that needs to happen. That's mm -hmm. where I would be able to come in. And if I had questions, I could come back to you for refinement, but I could then package that into a more like uh, easily to understand something closer to build instructions than currently exists. So for example, from, um, if I share again here, so from something that looks like, um, cause this, this kind of stuff, like I, yeah, maybe this plus some key things. Okay. This is what you got to do like critical things. And then another step is converting to instructions where you actually eliminate a, like you actively are eliminating some content because you, all we care about at that point is what is step one to three, right? Sure. Yeah. And, and the key, like the key decision you and I need to come to is what level of the instruction are we making here? So like if, if you're, if step one is pulling relevant information and you're saying, this is what it has to look like. Step two mm. is saying like, who's the audience? Is the audience, the instructor and the crew on the ground? Cause if that's the case, a lot of this information isn't going to apply. It's going to look more like you walk up onto a lot. Here's where you put your horizontal control. Um, and like, here's the lane that you need for the heavy equipment. And then here is how you set your grade. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to all of the uh, concrete quality details that are currently on slide two, like which those are a matter of procurement that should happen maybe in an appendix or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so basically like filtering, I mean, the crew is right now, and maybe we should reevaluate that it's assuming trades people like I would consider yourself, like you've done, you've done your woodworking. And so you know how to use a cordless drill and things like that. Right. And a saw. So I think that's the kind of audience, somebody who knows how to use tools like at that level. Right. Where, I mean, you've got some, I mean, it sounds like you, since you've got some level of passion for it, you've got, it's not just something that you're a total novice at. It's something you actually do. You know, you do your own projects, right? That level. So, I mean, how, how would you describe your level of involvement in, in woodworking? Yeah, functional amateur. Functional amateur that does, does home projects. Yeah. Weekend warrior. Weekend warrior. Do you think that that level would suffice or would it have to be beyond weekend warrior? It would be a professional in some field, like for example, a farmer who has to deal with like broken machines and, and fixing things all the time or a welder who does, who does a specific thing or. Well, I mean, I, the con the foundation is unique because with concrete, the stakes are too high to get it wrong. So you probably, <clears throat> I mean, the, the foundation at piece may just be the industry specs that the commercial concrete person needs to know because this first spec build, you're not designing it in a way for people to pour their own foundation. But for like wall modules and, and assembly, like I absolutely think that's within my skill set. Like my, my yeah. stepdad is a um, electrician. He taught me how to replace outlets, how to install lights, um, like how to run new circuits in a house. I'm not an electrician, but I would feel comfortable doing all that stuff because he showed me the fundamentals. Now, would a would a carpenter, for example, like if we give them, I mean, somebody, uh, there's going to be a graded graded site, um, and the somebody who. like a carpenter, can they actually put up the foundation forms, you think? They have never done a foundation. They, they built, you know, they're a professional rough rough carpenter or yeah, even a fence carpenter. Yeah, because forms forms are two by four and plywood. Yeah. yeah. And so you, there's yeah. a way you just, you would have to code switch. So you gave them a cut list and maybe a technical drawing or something like that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But um you know, like, again, yeah. it kind of goes back to, are you, 
is the end product supposed to be the like soup to nuts, every single detail you need to put this house together, regardless of your skill level that has all of the specs, all the dimensions. Uh, I, I like, I feel like that should be step one or like the first thing. And then from that would be the Ikea, like pictures instructions for people to put this together. Yeah. Yeah. Soup to nuts where, where you basically distill, like say from, you know, that entire foundation document with like, you know, whatever, 40 pages that took to explore all the various issues of integration. It's just summarized uh, one, a few pages, one, two, three pages for somebody to build. But the soup to nuts would be, um, I mean, how do you see the soup to nuts thing being different from like IKEA style fabrication diagrams? I well, mean, it should literally we, be. We, we would need industry standard formats. We would need technical drawings. So like my buddy who works concrete in South Carolina, works with an engineering firm who produces the drawings that they they map out their sites with so like, like that that should be a key output of this is being able to go to some firm that draft or whatever and say like here's our design and here's all the specs turn this into something that a concrete company can read But again, the foundation is different from the wall modules and from the roof and everything else that people can assemble modularly. Well, it's, it is different. It requires, um, it's different, but when you break it down into individual parts, it's, um, it's still, you know, you put one foot in front of the other. It's, there's nothing sure. like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying. Like a, a weekend warrior with enough clear instruction could do this themselves. I, I don't doubt you. But what I'm saying is like, we have to go deep to go wide or to go shallow. Like we have to, we have to have the course, industry standard spec to then, yeah. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff will generate that, but it's like when you, when we're on a field and we're assuming we've got a bunch of individuals, uh, say trades people who likes a person that is not familiar with reading a concrete foundation drawing yeah um it's still in a, in a you know it's universalized so for example it might be like a dimensional drawing not not like the sure yeah it won't be like yeah yeah that kind like of here's thing. here's your, here's your corner reference point here's your right angle so here here's the horizontal control that you need for this whole building now dig a dig a trench from this point to that point that is you know 16 inches deep eight inches whatever um yeah yeah sure like for example on on page eight that's not a it's a mix of of um an architectural detail drawing and more of a concept thing like it's a kind of a hybrid but i think it's actually more clear um it's it's a little different so so while you might give a different thing to a to a building department, the guy who's going to be building it might need something more like this. That's that's the point. So we have to. I think the art here will be in in getting the kind of right level of detail or like a, abstracting the correct information for the person doing the doing the task. So I think 100%. that might be the yeah, yeah the challenge. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's, but yeah, it's, we have it's 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 similar to reading a map so like when i look at slide a what i would want to see as a weekend warrior trying to do this is i need i need to orient myself to the building so what part of the building am i looking at that is a jargon and what direction and how do i orient what i'm looking at on the page to what i'm looking at in the building and yeah. what's the legend to tell me what these different colors and sh and shapes and everything mean that yeah 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 that that kind of a so it's like, it's kind of like information architecture. Yep. Okay. I, I so can I can translate, I can translate detailed shit into simple instructions for human beings. Like I, mm -hmm. I can do that. Um, but that just okay. means we need to have detailed instructions to work off of. Okay. So maybe what, what I'll do is, um, um, as soon as I crank out, yeah, help help me uh yeah communicate so I'll, I'll do the draft and and then you can say okay bam yeah but i guess you're right it would be pointless for you to try to study the entire document because i've studied that quite a bit and decided it made s several decisions now you can evaluate those decisions like i can make some points here it's like i did this because 
and and put some rationale like design rationales which are actually uh, part of the it's not specifically in there but the conceptual design should also show design rationale um like why did you make right. that choice that should come as a interplay between the requirements and the conceptual design should be able to translate that but yeah a rationale we, sh should be implicit this is actually a really genius way to d go about doing this because you've got the really smart um detail-oriented experienced person you and the person who's never done this before me so essentially what we're doing is we're saying Martin, you're coming to me and you're saying like, this is what I needed to look like and here's all the instructions to it. I'm saying, I'm translating that into put bolt here, cut, you know, dig hole here, uh, level of type stuff. And in the absence right. of any expertise, I'm, I, I have to find the clearest possible path because I'm learning it myself. So like, this is actually potentially a, a like perfect matchup to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's right. Um, because the, the thing I learned, it's like, well, okay, this foundation, like, holy crap. Like, how do you do it? And how do you know that it's right? Well, it boils down to measure this here, like this, uh, tension the string like this, or do this and that, like elementally the steps are anyone can do. And, uh, but the trickiness sometimes happens in, is in that you, I guess the difference between, a, just to clarify, the difference between a pro and a complete novice is the pro knows step one, two, three, four, and they do it fast and accurate and quick. But uh, pending an, an, a clear instructional, the complete novice can do those same things the only other thing is you have to build in quality control checkpoints. Somebody has to um, control that, but the per you can also have the person do that too and, and provide feedback. But I was thinking that one, one useful thing in a build that we might want to do like even right now is, is picture uploads where you got basically visual quality control. There, there are apps for visual quality control, like remote quality control actually already. And we, we could probably look into that um, but the quality control is absolutely, absolutely essential. There's a, a process needs to be built in explicitly. One simple one is there's a person that has nothing but the analog of the instructionals, which are the quality control checkpoints, and they just check it. Other way that would be say that augmented a little bit with the people actually self-controlling themselves. The instructions say, take a picture of this and upload it to your app, you know, right. at this right. point. And that way, like, the quality control person actually takes a look at all that. That just comes in as a stream. They, as simple as a Google Drive or whatever, some some place to get Facebook, Facebook stream. You upload the stuff. The person who's managing that, are just taking a look at that stream, assuming presence of internet, they'll see immediately what each picture means, and right. and they'll be able to be on top of it if it goes wrong, if anything goes <clears> wrong. That that kind of thing. It's it's not. It's not too complicated. It requires a very deliberate process, though. It's not particularly sure. complicated. It just needs to be and, implemented. Right. And there's going to yeah. be layers. There's going to be layers. So, like on the actual instruction, there should be gates that you have to pass before you move on to the next step. So, like, do the diagonals? Are the diagonals equal? Right. Like, so that's how you check if your wall is square. Right. Well, gates is the synonym here for quality control, right? Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Oof. Now that we've worked out how to work in perfect unanim unanimity and harmony together, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I guess I'll I'll stand by for a second for you to send me the first batch or link. To, to tell me which thing you want me to focus on first. And we'll sort of work in tandem like that. Yeah. And then um, so we do in the application for the. Yeah, I, I've been digging into your articles and published material to try and pull out the gems so that the 1500 word pitch is, you know, clear and concise. Um, if you want me to start working on that as well, I can. Until I get you the, the, the first draft of stuff for you to actually refine to human readable form. <laughs> 
Well, I, what I was going to say is like, I can help you out now by get like, again, third party test. I can, I can start uh, picking out the threads that I think are most, most compelling and we can collaborate a little bit before you start trying to knock out the, the whole 1500 word thing. How much is a 1500 word? Is that two pages? Um, maybe three double space. Okay. Now, what, which aspect, because that, I mean, there's a whole narrative, but when you think about it, what, which aspect is the most that we got to focus on? Cause, cause, um, thing that keeps coming to me is, is this rapid learning. Right. And maybe, maybe we apply for something like, okay, here's uh, gamification of the process. I don't know. Have you thought about stuff like that, that you learn, learn skills in a built in a um, gamification environment or that doesn't make sense. No, there's, I mean, there's advanced tools that from AR and, you know, gaming that can help in this, but I'm not well, sure if we want to go there. It's to, to me, the, the tweet version of OSE is OSC seeks to democratize human well-being. And the industrial tools that help create it. Oh, I mean, like, like that's the big idea. That's the moonshot. And I like the um, quote from the article from Mark Belinsky. It's like we we make victory gardening tools for your victory garden. That resonates deeply with me. And so, like, <clears throat> you know, the gamification of uh, this and the distributed enterprise and all those are supporting lines of effort in the overall mission to democratize human well-being. You're, you're creating a positive shock to the like total factor productivity of the economy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how much detail do we go into? Okay, here's the CD home. That's the central thing we focus around, right? With the, um, with our pathway for uh, executing that and rolling that out. That's kind of the basics. Or because, because then what you just said doesn't talk about, okay, we're, we're developing this CD home to put a dent along those lines. I mean, I, to me, the CD home is the culmination of uh, more important earlier chapters in this story. And so like democratize human well-being, you've got a great origin story in this tractor, stupid tractor that you built, you know, broke down and you had to build one yourself. And so like the, the sequence of events from building tractor yourself to people moving from all across the world to participate in this and the crowdfunding, the Kickstarter and learning yourself what's possible and what your challenges are. And then the CD go home is after that. And the CD Go Home is the perfect launching pad into how we're going to use grant funding to further this vision, given all of the blood, sweat, and tears that you put into this. Because like solving housing to me is still a subset of the democratizing human well-being. But how how much are you being accountable to to like I mean what is this? So is this like seed money and then, oh, like there's going to be major investment or, or what's the framework no, 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 that they're is, looking at just to support you like in startup? Moonshot, or? This is moonshot ideas that lead to exponential growth. And I mean, this is almost a quote from their, their website, which is like, we, we want to see exponential growth in human well-being through innovation. And so, so there's nothing tied to this money. The whole reason the Emerging Ventures Grant is unique is because they they just want to give moonshot thinkers the resources they need to pursue without restriction. That's the, that's the whole purpose of this prize, which is why I, you know, thought it'd be perfect for you. Did they, um, I mean, did they mention any qu quantities? Like how, how much are they talking about? So like funding. I, I've seen, I've seen a hundred K, um, but I think they tailor the, they tailor the dollar amount to the application. And I, it, if you make a case, and you, one of the attachments we put on there is a budget for infrastructure improvements on the campus, and you already have Department of Labor approval for a work process, and you know that you need $250,000 for infrastructure, I wouldn't be surprised if they come close to meeting that. 
or meeting half of that. I mean, something's su very substantial. So, but uh, I mean, that's that's more like the startup. I mean, seed money, right? I mean, that's that's pretty much that because I mean, that's not. I mean, not the millions like a typical startup gets, right? Well, typical startups give away equity for those millions and seed funding sometimes comes with strings attached. This is this is unrestricted funding. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, 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 they gave a 18 year old economic high school graduate in India who's an economics prodigy money just to write research. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so Are they disclosing the amounts they they funded the projects with, or in your um, big spreadsheet? I haven't seen it. No, not on that spreadsheet. I haven't seen any amounts disclosed. But I'm sure it's. I, I doubt that it's super secret. I'm sure, you could find out. Okay. But I guess thinking, uh, because it's like. I'm just trying to to clarify whether they're actually interested in funding like because we can come up with budgets for various at various scales and how important is it to say okay this the the funding from like talking about this this grant will get us to x y or z right so should we be pitching for something very specific along those lines so, so okay here's I, the i, I the think so infrastructure. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it. I don't think there's any secret that the campus infrastructure is a critical next step to the, you know, to the vision. And we have okay. a pretty good handle on what that would take. And I just Googled how much is the Emerging Ventures grant, and they range between 10000 and 500000 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. So... So focus, yeah. So focusing around campus growth to make it happen, yeah, yeah. That's that's reasonable. That's a very tangible thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. All right. All right. Can can we can we review the plan just real quick to give me a warm and fuzzy? Mm -hmm. You're going to start filtering information and feeding it to me to refine and edit. I'm going to start or continue working on the Emergent Ventures grant. And those are the two focuses right now for next week. Yep, in the background there's the, yeah, in the background there's, we'll meet with the, the city on the 16th. Right, and I, I, we should probably reach out to see like what the hell is going on with that. Yep. Okay. Great, man. Um, always good to see you. All right. Good to see you. Thanks. And yeah, yep. continue. Continue next time. And the right, submission man. for the, the Emergent Ventures is when? Do they have a I mean, specific date? It's, it's a rolling process. They okay, announce so we'll, the cohort we'll winners, that. I think, every three months. <clears throat> Very cool. All right. Okay. So we'll talk next week then. All right, later, man.